FTC programming 10, encoders and motors, or how can we use DC motors like servos? So here's my motor, it's an Andymark motor, and I have a encoder cable plugged into it. The other end of it goes into the controller, and you gotta be careful because the color of the wires and how they're positioned matters. It won't work if they're put in the wrong way. So here's my hardware file for the creating of my robot, and you can see I've got my motors listed out and named. I map them to what they're going to be called on the phone, and then I'm even saying here, run without encoder. And that's it. You don't need to do anything special when you create them. Now, here's an autonomous program that's just going to drive forward. I have a data member referring to the hardware of my robot. And then inside the run op mode, I initialize the hardware, and then I wait for start. And then I just got some simple code for driving the robot forward. And after that, I'm going to put some code in to move the motor that's uh, got an arm on it exactly 90 degrees. First thing I'm going to do is create a variable that's going to hold the number of uh, tick counts for my motor. And this is different for every motor, so you're going to have to look it up. In this case, this motor has a tick count of 1,120. That means it takes 1,120 tick counts to make a full revolution. So if I want mine to do 90 degrees, that would be a quarter turn. That means I need to divide this number by 4. And I'm going to save that amount in a variable called quarter turn. Next step, I need to tell the motor, I'm going to set its mode to stop and reset. Since this is the first time I'm using this motor with its encoder. So I'm going to set that number of tick counts to 0. So now I've reset it to zero. Now I need to set a target position for the encoder in the motor. And so I use the set target position and I'm going to give it the quarter turn value. So it'll go from zero to whatever 1,120 divided by four is. And I need to change that to an integer. The target position needs to be an integer. Another way to do this would be to create a new target and base that target off the current position of the encoder or of the motor's encoder counts. And then you add on the quarter turn to that. And then you give the new target to the set target position. This way, if you forget to set it back to zero, it's adding on to the existing number of encoder counts. Now set the power at which you want to move to that position. Do you want to go slowly or quickly. If you want to go uh, quickly with a lot of power, then set the power to a full value of 1. Now the next step should make sense. You want to set the mode for that motor to run to position. So you're saying, okay, I gave you a target. Run to that target. Run to that position. Now after that line of code, we need to figure out when we're done turning because we wouldn't want to move forward and do any other steps until it's done. To accomplish this, I'm going to use a while loop. And in that while loop, it's going to test to see if the arm is busy. If it's busy, do nothing else while it's working. Or you could do something like print telemetry info to your phone so you know what the uh, robot's doing. So while that motor's working, we're going to print information to the phone. As soon as that robot arm is no longer busy, we're going to leave the while loop. And now it's done moving, we can stop that motor and move on to any other tasks. You can even stop and reset the motor if you're planning on using it again. So basically these are the steps. And here's how it runs. It drives forward and it drops the arm 90 degrees. All right, so how would we make the arm move back to the original position? Uh, the code's going to be pretty similar, except that we're going to change the target position. So our new target is going to be equal to the current position minus the quarter turn. Now that we have that new target, we can set the target position to that new target, that number of tick counts. We're going to set the power. We're 
we're going to set the mode to run to position. Again, we have to wait while the arm is working, and we do that by using the while loop to check if the arm is busy. And while it's busy, I'm just going to print to the phone what the motor and what the robot are doing. And then once it's not busy, it leaves the while loop, and then I'm going to set the power to zero to stop the motor from moving. All right, let's try something a little bit different. Let's say the motor is a pulley and I want it to turn three full revolutions, three turns. And even though this is different, we're going to do it exactly the same way. First, I have to calculate my new target position. So I'm going to say new target. It's going to be equal to the current position. And then I'm going to add on three times the total number of motor tick counts. So that it'll do three turns. Now that I know the new target position, I can set the target position. Oops, I see a warning here. It says I'm required to have an int, but I'm giving it a double. I forgot to put an integer in front of the motor tick count. I want to force that to be an integer. Uh, next step, I need to set the power for the arm to one or half or whatever you would like. Set the mode to run to position. Again, we're going to have to wait while the arm is busy. And when it's no longer busy, I want to set the power to zero to turn that motor off. All right, so you can see the robot drive forward. It puts the arm down, back up, and then it spins three times. Encoders are useful for making robots drive a precise distance. How could you program the robot to move a precise distance.